God bless you, friends, brothers, and sisters in Jesus Christ, my family. Today, I want to give you seven tips on how to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit and show you what the voice of the Holy Spirit is like. I'm sure you know the Holy Spirit's voice, but I'm here to bring more clarity to the voice of of the Holy Spirit. I know you know this verse, but Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. Okay, so when the Holy Spirit speaks to you, if you are Jesus' sheep, a true follower and disciple of Jesus, you will hear his voice. You will know it is him and you will follow him. Okay, so when Jesus speaks or when the Holy Spirit, specifically the person of the Holy Spirit, speaks to you, you must follow him. Okay, Mark 4, 24, Jesus says, Take heed what you hear. With the same measure you use, it will be measured to you. And to who you hear, more will be given. For whoever has, to him more will be given. But whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken away from him. So first let's talk about why you may not be hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit. The number one reason God is not speaking to you is because he already has spoken to you and you haven't done the last thing that he told you to do. Okay, if you live a life of willfully sinning against God, the Holy Spirit will not speak to you because you know in your conscience and in your soul that you are supposed to turn from that sin, whatever it is, fornication, pornography, not being a good steward of your body, of your finances, okay? If there is sin that you know in your life that you must turn from, you must turn from it because the Holy Spirit has already spoken to you. The Holy Spirit has already told you to turn from that sin. The Holy Spirit has already told you to do that thing and you know it deep inside of you. You know it in your mind, you know it in your soul, you know it in your spirit because it is in alignment with God's word. So the Holy Spirit will not continue to speak to you if you do not do that thing that the Holy Spirit already said to do. We must turn from willful sin. We must turn from any wickedness and when the Holy Spirit speaks, we must do it. Jesus said, take heed what you hear. With the same measure you use, it will be measured to you. So to the measure that you want to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit and actually do it, is to the measure that you will hear. If you desire for the Holy Spirit to lead and guide your every step of your every day, then the Holy Spirit will speak to you and the Holy Spirit will do it if you submit and if you actually do what the Holy Spirit is telling you to do. For whoever has, to him more will be given. But whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken away from him. So if the Holy Spirit speaks to you, and if you're not doing what the Holy Spirit says, then the Holy Spirit's not going to speak to you. You must be willing to yield yourself to the Holy Spirit, to yield your time, yield your day, yield your life, yield your free time, yield your mind, yield insecurities, yield, you know, yield who you are to the Holy Spirit so the Holy Spirit can then speak to you. Okay, so the, again, the number one reason that prevents us from hearing the Holy Spirit is we're living a life of willfully disobeying or we haven't done the last thing that the Holy Spirit told us to do. You can't expect the Holy Spirit to keep on speaking to you when the Holy Spirit already spoke to you and told you to not do that thing or to do that thing, okay? Number one, or the first tip on how to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, and this is from personal experience, okay? The Holy Spirit is gentle, soft, and gracious but 
firm and stern like a father. The voice of the Holy Spirit is so soft, so gentle, so meek, and so gracious that yes, it can be easy to miss if you're not practicing training and tuning your ear into the Holy Spirit. But the Holy Spirit will not allow you to miss also because the Holy Spirit is is stern. It's firm. It's like the voice of a father, a loving, gracious father who's firm, who, who is very confident in what he says. He knows exactly what he said. He need not repeat himself, even though I believe in my personal encounters, you can ask the Holy Spirit time and time again. And if you are willing to yield to what the Holy Spirit tells you to do, then the Holy Spirit will speak to you, okay? But (laughs) you must be willing to do because you can't just keep asking and asking and asking when you already know the Holy Spirit has spoken to you. The next step is to actually do it. So the Holy Spirit is firm stern like a father it's it's a very you know bold stern firmness it's a concrete voice and we're going to see this in in jesus and his voice because jesus spoke out of the holy spirit jesus filled with the holy spirit right baptized the spirit ascended upon him like a dove it alighted on him so jesus spoke by the holy spirit so i have some really good examples for you that i want to show on the voice of the holy spirit okay so number two the holy spirit usually won't tell you too much It's not a long thought out thought process with reasons behind everything. And again, we're going to see examples of this in the word. It's something very simple, few words. The Holy Spirit speaks in few words. Very, very simple. Our father is simple. Okay, he speaks simple to us so we can understand and just do what he wants us to do. Praise God. He's not, you know, giving us uh, paragraphs in books and he very, you know, very well may. This is what he did to prophets. Okay, he gives them long words. Pastors, he can give you long words, but often, okay, very often the Holy Spirit doesn't say too much. It's very simple. So let's go to Mark 3, 1. This is the healing on the Sabbath. Jesus entered the synagogue again, and a man was there who had a withered hand. So they watched him closely, whether he would heal him on the Sabbath, so that they might accuse him. And Jesus said to the man who had the withered hand, Step forward. Okay, this is really good. Two words Jesus says to the man with the withered hand. He says, step forward. Okay, this is where most people, they go, why? They go, they go, Holy Spirit, was that you telling me to step forward? You're standing there in the line. You're at the gas station. You're, you know, just standing there doing something. And Holy Spirit says, get up, step forward. And you, you say, why? Why do you want me to do that, Holy Spirit? Or what's your reason? The Holy Spirit doesn't want to give you a reason for everything he's calling you to do. Why? Because the Holy Spirit wants you to move in faith step by step. The Holy Spirit doesn't want to give you the full plan if you can't even do the very first thing the Holy Spirit tells you to do, which is step forward. The Holy Spirit told you to sell your house. You don't need a why and a reason. Where am I going to live? Do you want me to move to a different city? What do I do after I sell my house? Am I going to live in an apartment? Am I going to go live with my parents? Am I going to go live with my kids? No, the Holy Spirit wants to know, will you do the very first thing that I called you to do? And as you tune in your ear to hear the Holy Spirit, you will do it and you will move faster and faster and the Holy Spirit will speak very clearly more and more because to him who has and to him who heeds to the voice of the Holy Spirit, more will be given, okay? To whatever measure you are willing to receive and obey in the fear of the Lord, more will be given to you. 
So Jesus says to the man with the withered hand, step forward. Then Jesus said to them, is it lawful on the Sabbath to do good or to do evil? He's speaking to, you know, of course, the religious people. And Jesus says to the religious people, is it lawful on the Sabbath to do good or to do evil, to save life or to kill? But they kept silent. And when Jesus had looked around at them with anger, being grieved by the hardness of their hearts, Jesus said to the man, stretch out your hand. Okay, the first thing Jesus says is step forward. The second thing Jesus says is stretch out your hand. Okay, this is when the human mind, again, likes to go step forward. I mean, Okay, you can respond to that. Now it's stretch out your hand and you're you're there in public. You're you're there at the gas station. You're there and, and you're like, stretch out my hand. Why would I stretch out my hand? People, people are around me. Okay, if you care about what other people think, if you're concerned in yourself and in your mind about what other people think about you, it's going to be hard to yield to the voice of the Holy Spirit. This is something, this self-centeredness, always thinking people are watching you and looking at you. This is something that you need to pray. The Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus will uproot out of you. So that way, when the Holy Spirit does speak, you can do what Jesus and what the Holy Spirit is calling you to do. Oh, I can't sell my house because, uh, you know, what am I going to do with my finances? What are the people going to think about this decision that I make? Okay, this is between you and God. Your relationship is between you and God. And in order to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit, you need to stop listening to all those ungodly connections, all of those ungodly voices, all of the people who are trying to speak into your ear. Jesus said, take heed to who you hear. Who are you listening to? Okay. And if you're filling your mind with junk, junk, social media, junk, movies, junk, Netflix, junk. If you're constantly listening to junk, you're going to have junk in your mind. And the Holy Spirit is by no means a voice of junk. It's a precious voice. It's a rich voice, a gracious, soft, firm, stern voice powerful voice and and those who know the voice of God and who love God will heed to his voice and they will crave his voice and they will search his word for his voice and to see if that voice is in alignment with scripture okay Jesus says step forward and then stretch out your hand okay and by these two acts of faith this man is healed it says he stretched it out and his hand was restored as whole as the other okay so this man moved in faith he didn't say step forward why would i step forward you know i'm i'm sitting here i'm comfortable i'm good right here and then when jesus said stretch out your hand he didn't say why would i stretch out my hand you can speak to me right here you can heal me right Right here okay so when the Holy Spirit speaks we must yield number three is it won't make sense and you won't have a reason again this is very often what I have found about the voice of the Holy Spirit okay this isn't always but very often it won't make sense and you will not have a reason why is this? I know we know this verse. Proverbs 3, 5 to 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding and all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. Again, it's about faith. The voice of the Holy Spirit is all about faith. Hebrews 11:6 says, It is impossible to please God without faith. You can do all these great and mighty works. You can do healings and deliverances and signs and wonders. But if you do not have faith, it does not please God. That's why it pleases God for Him to speak to you and for Him and for you to listen. 
Because when you listen and you step forward, even though you have no idea why you're stepping forward or why you're driving to that grocery store or why you're going to that event other than the fact that the Holy Spirit said to do it, it pleases God because it's an act of faith. I was driving the other day. And I'm going down the road. I want to tell you a couple stories too that I believe you'll be excited to hear because the Holy Spirit has been speaking to me very clearly. This is why my head is shaved right now if you're watching the video version. But I was driving, okay? And we get food. We get food. We got a lot of food coming in from Trader Joe's into our church. And as we were receiving this food on a Thursday, I was telling a member of the church, we should hand out this food to other people. It'd be so good to hand out this food because we have so much abundance. Okay, it was the seed that was planted by the Holy Spirit. And I was not yet aware of it at that time, but the Holy Spirit was speaking through me. So we left the church on that Thursday and now I'm driving home and I'm driving past this chapel and they got these signs that say free food and I say wow free food because the Holy Spirit told me not to eat that morning it's about 11 11 30 I haven't ate yet because the Holy Spirit told me not to eat even though they were handing out food there was a food in the lunchroom in the back the Holy Spirit said do not eat but the Holy Spirit said pray and I yield to the first thing that the Holy Spirit told me to do, which was to stay in the church and pray. But now I'm driving down the road and they got these signs to the chapel, free food. And I speak it, I say, free food. And then I keep on driving. And, and the Holy Spirit spoke to me through my voice when I said that. And I'm driving now and, and something is stirring up in me. It, it's really stirring up and it's like this heat, this this fire, and it, and it just burns more and more. And as I'm driving, I see, I, I see a bald man. I see a very bald man. So I, I go past a few stoplights, probably, you know, a few too, a few too many, a few more than I should, because I knew that the Holy Spirit kept on burning and burning in me the farther I went and the Holy Spirit was telling me to make a U-turn. So I went and I made a U-turn and I believed that I was going to this place to speak to a bald man. I saw a very, very bald head. So I'm going through... I'm now going through the, the little drive-in to the chapel where they're handing out the food. So I'm looking for this bald man, and the wo woman who greets me <laughs> is a woman, and she's not bald, bald. She has a full head of hair, and she she gathers my information. I said, you know, do you need my information? She says, yeah, and then, you know, they want to give me this, this big... Um, thing of food and I say actually I don't need food I just want to bless you I want to encourage you I want to say God bless you thank you for all that you do and I'm just speaking waiting for the Holy Spirit to speak through me because I'm being obedient to the voice of the Holy Spirit but the Holy Spirit doesn't give me anything doesn't say anything and the guy says here you can you can take this food even though I'm telling him hey you know I have I have abundance I have everything that I need, but the, the guy says, you can take this food. So I take the food, put it in my car, and the, the guy says, well, you can give it to someone else. If you don't need it, you can give it to someone else. So then that's when the Holy Spirit is, yeah, you're going to give this to someone else. So this is when I go driving looking for a bald man. I know that this food now, it was going to go to a bald man. So I'm just driving, just praying, praying in tongues, praying in the spirit, waiting for the Holy Spirit to show me who to give this to. I see a guy passing by on his bike and, and he's bald, but he, he still has, you know, he's got some speckles. He's got some stuff on his hair and I know it's not him. We also um, pull into um a little lot there there's you know Carl's Jr other fast food and there's a partially bald guy mostly bald guy but he's picking up trash and and I just keep on driving going in in loops different places and and praying asking for the leading of the Holy Spirit and then God is showing me there's this temple there there's this Buddhist temple there 
and the Holy Spirit shows that this is the place. So we come into this lot now. We have this food, and we go to the front door, and we're we're kind of you know in, in the doorbell to this Buddhist temple, and a man comes out the side, tells us to come in, and we come into the temple, and there's a kitchen there, and there's these ladies there, ladies there speaking to us, tell us to, you know, sit down, start worshiping the Buddha, give respect to the Buddha. Of course, we're not going to do this, and I'm not really even listening to them. I hear them, but I'm not heeding to their voice in any way because the Holy Spirit is telling me to lead, telling me to guide and lead the conversation that I'm not going to submit to actually, you know, these demons that are speaking through these people, telling me to worship this idol. Okay, this is the voice of demons, the voice of unclean spirits now trying to speak to me. So I'm not even listening to them and we're engaging in conversation. And I I say, hey, I have this food for you. Take this food that I have for you. It's very good food. It's from Trader Joe's. It's high quality produce and bread. And they try to direct us to a, a, a different temple but eventually something clicks and it shifts in them they say yeah you know we'll take the food we'll take the food so we go out the door and and i'm telling the one with me um, i'm telling yeah the minister with me i say to her it's the bald man because there's a bald man in there he was sitting off to the side was this monk very very bald monk shiny head monk there who lived in that temple and he has this whole smorgasbord of food all of this food there in front of them i'm saying pray for him pray for him we need to pray for him so we grab the food we bring it in i give it to one of the women she takes the food from me and then the monk wants me to hand the food to him so i say okay you know i grab the food i hand it to him and then he wants to bless me Okay, so he tells me to put my hands together. I put my hands together and he blesses me. Of course, I I know blessings come from God. Blessings come directly from above. And whatever it is that he spoke, it's not really important to me. But it was good that he was going to bless me because after I knew I was going to bless him, I was truly going to bless him in the name of Jesus because this is the bald-headed man that the Holy Spirit spoke to me about. And this is the man who I was going to pray for. So he blessed me and then I got to grab his hands, both of his hands with both of my hands and I got to pray for him. In the name of Jesus, I proclaim the God of the universe, the blood of Jesus and what he did on the cross, praying for him and that the Holy Spirit would fill him. And then we left and we believed God was going to do what he wanted to do there. Okay, so it doesn't make sense. Very often, number three is the voice of the Holy Spirit will not make sense. He said, hey, go go to the food place. I didn't know why. Knew I didn't need food. Okay, it didn't make sense. But the Holy Spirit had a plan. Number four is you will have grace and peace. Okay, this doesn't mean it won't be uncomfortable. It often is uncomfortable, okay? When the Holy Spirit speaks, we will often do things that are uncomfortable. They're out of our element. They might stir something up in our spirit because it is uncomfortable. The more you get used to the uncomfortable, though, the less uncomfortable it will be. And I pray that you can get to a place that yielding to the voice of the Holy Spirit will be comfortable, Okay, it will become more and more comfortable. And if you fear God, and if you fear, you truly, truly fear God and desire to walk in all of his ways, he says he will direct your paths. But the fear of the Lord is the hatred of evil. If you want to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit and have the Holy Spirit speak to you, you must hate evil evil and you must desire to do what is right and you must desire to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. I was I was sitting with someone and they were telling me, man, the Holy Spirit is really just telling me not to speak. But they kept on speaking and, and they kept on instructing and guiding and saying, hey, the Holy Spirit is really telling me not to speak. But they kept on speaking and the fear of the Lord hit me. 
The fear of the Lord hit me for them because I was I was thinking within myself, if the Holy Spirit tells you not to speak, you better shut your mouth because that's the voice of God Almighty. And you do not want to disobey the Holy Spirit. Because if you disobey the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit isn't going to keep on speaking to you. But again, we saw earlier, the more you yield and do what the Holy Spirit is calling you to do when the Holy Spirit tells you to go pray for that person. And you say, why? I, I don't, they don't look like they need prayer. They got a smile on their face. This is very key. Okay, this is an extra point. We got a lot of extra points here. An extra point here in hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit and yielding to the Holy Spirit is you must walk by faith and not by sight. The Holy Spirit is really speaking to me a lot. Yesterday, I saw a woman that was coming into the store. I saw her from afar and she has this cane. She's walking with this cane. Cain and, and I see her in my spirit. The Holy Spirit just speaks to me, says her, her. Okay. Very simple. Just like Jesus, very few words and very simple, but the Holy Spirit says her, her. And, and, and the Holy Spirit goes into this, or sorry, the woman goes into the store. And now I'm asking, I'm praying, God, you want me to speak to her? God, you have a word for her? God, you want to heal her Holy Spirit? And I'm praying a lot in tongues because I don't even, I don't know what to pray. I don't know what to ask for. I need the Holy Spirit to intercede for me, through me. So I'm praying in tongues for this woman, just praying and praying and praying for her in tongues, right? One minute becomes two minutes and then five minutes and, and just praying and it just stirring up inside of me. And then all of a sudden I get the burden of the Lord. The burden of the Lord gets put on me to go pray for her, okay? And I do not know why, but I go in and now I'm just kind of walking around the store and I'm listening to her speak because she's speaking to someone and, and I'm discerning her spirit and her spirit is very lifted up. It's very encouraged. She seems in a very good place spiritually. So I'm asking God, you know, why? Why? And these are things that I, I believe God is training me as I'm sharing this with you. I believe he's training you too, but God is still training me because I know God is going to take me to a place where the Holy Spirit is going to speak. It's going to be like a dagger. It's going to hit my spirit and I'm going to move immediately. But here I'm in this store and I'm praying and, and, and I just, you know, I, I just don't know what it is, but I'm assuming it's for her body. Because of the way that I moved on, the way that she was moving with this cane, okay? And this was my mistake. So I go to her and I say, the Holy Spirit is asking me to pray for you. And she goes, okay, you know, let, let me see what I, what I need pray for. She goes, yes, yes, it's, it's for my kids. It's for my three kids, okay? All grew up Christian. One was a youth pastor, but now all three of them are are apart from the faith. They've all turned away from following Jesus. And this is why God was grieving my spirit for this woman is because she was she was a pastor, right? A preacher, a minister of God's word. She said she was an assistant pastor and her kids grew up in the faith, but all three of them have turned from it. And the Holy Spirit is grieving because of this. So I go to pray for her and she's actually praying in tongues and I feel the spirit of God in her and we come and we touch and agree and I'm praying in tongues and, and, and then I, I just start weeping in the spirit for her and I start to pray for her kids and, and God shows me her and her household will be saved that her kids will be saved and sealed for the day of Christ his second coming but then I move out of my own flesh and out of my own mind to then go on to pray for her for her mind for her heart and for her physical body and I and I grab her hands away from her cane and I'm holding her hands okay and I say this as I'm praying for her I say she will walk by sight and not by faith and then I and I chuckle a little bit I laugh a little bit because I know that I switched up the word faith and sight. 
I say she will walk by sight and not by faith. And I chuckle because I'm not embarrassed, but I think it's funny that I mixed up the verse. And then I become very silent. I thank God and I kind of end the prayer right there. Okay. And the Holy Spirit shows me and the Holy Spirit corrected me in this because the Holy Spirit is training me that I must walk by faith and not by sight. Because I was right when the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said her. I was right when the Holy Spirit told me to pray for her. I knew that I needed to pray for her and it stirred up in my spirit and I obeyed and I went and prayed for her and I listened to her voice of what she needed prayer. But I had something in my mind because I saw her with the cane. And she said after I prayed, she says, yes, we walk by faith, not by sight. She says, I thank you for your prayers. I receive your prayers for my children. But, I, you know, I can't come into any agreement for my healing because I am healed. This is a woman of the Lord saying I am healed. It's not what I do in the physical or what I look like in the natural, but I am already healed because the word of God says by his stripes we are healed. So that woman knew she was a healed woman. And this is when the Holy Spirit had a word for me in hearing God's voice, hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit, which is to walk walk by faith, not by sight. So what you see with sight, it is irrelevant, completely irrelevant. It only matters what you see in the spirit. The word of God says, do not walk by sight, but by faith. It, it doesn't say walk in sight and in faith, walk partially in sight and walk in faith. No, it says do not walk by sight. It says walk fully by faith, what you see in the spirit. And another good example of this is I was in Germany I was in Cologne and I was walking past this big cathedral and there was this man there and he was crying. He was just bawling out and he had this sign that he was homeless. He needed help. He looked like a homeless man. He was crying and weeping like a homeless man. And, and I had a heart for him. I really had a heart for him. So I went and I gave him 20 euros. That's about $23 or so. And I put my arm around him and I, I said, God bless you. You know, God loves you. And I, I made it very clear. I was giving him this money and that I cared for him. And, and, and I was in Cologne for a couple days and I walked by that temple and there was another time where he pulled out his phone. He was speaking and he was laughing and he was having a good time. And then he put his phone in his pocket. He put his sign back up and he started sobbing and crying. Okay, this man was putting on a fake act. Okay, he still, yes, he still probably needed money. But still, if I was hearing in the spirit, I believe that the spirit of God did not want me to give money to this man. So we must walk by faith and not by sight. Okay, number five is if you're submissive to God and you pray over it, it will really stir up in your spirit more and more until you do it. Okay, it will just stir up until you just got to speak. You got to do what God is calling you to do. You got to go pray for that person. If God speaks and you pray over it and you pray over it, and if it's urgent, then it will stir up more and more. If you have the Holy Spirit in you and you yield to the Holy Spirit, if it's something that's like a big life decision, it may, you know, most likely won't stir up in you immediately, but it's something that you pray and pray over as the days go on. You pray and pray that that new job or leaving your job, leaving your career, selling your house. This is something that the Holy Spirit will just stir up more and more if he's spoken to you and you will know it because you will not have that peace and that grace that we just talked to in number four until you actually do that thing that the Holy Spirit told you to do. Okay, I believe if it's more urgent, like the woman who I just saw walk into the store, I prayed and I prayed and within minutes, the Holy Spirit was really just stirring up saying, go pray for her. Go pray for her, okay? So the, the Spirit will stir up in you. It doesn't matter if it's a word of correction, if it's against or, you know, for, not against, but for someone. 
in authority to correct them, if it's from the Holy Spirit, you will have to speak it because you just won't have peace and grace until you do because it's the Word of God and you know that you must submit to the Word of God. Number six is the fruit of the Spirit will be with you. What is the fruit of the Spirit? I know you know the fruit of the Spirit. It's Galatians 5, 22. It says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. And those who are Christ's have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. So if you belong to Christ, if you truly belong to Jesus, you've crucified the flesh. You've crucified your natural carnal mind. You've crucified your selfish passions, your selfish desires, and you pray for God's desires to be in you. You live a life of service to other people. How can I serve other people? What can I do for that person? When people, you just see see people and you encounter people and you just start praying for strangers and and if you just pray for them praise God if you're just praying for them you know it's just you and God just praying for them but sometimes God will speak to you about that person it's because your heart was already for them when you just saw them you know that eternity is on the line it's hell fire for all of eternity or it's God's goodness in the new heaven in the new earth for all of eternity so you're praying for that person you 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 ask you want the burden of God for them to be put on you the burden of their soul so you can just go and if hey if God doesn't give you anything which very often will happen you can pray for plenty of people tens hundreds even thousands of people and not get a word from the Holy Spirit but God will train you as you become more and more willing to yield and as you tune your ear in to hear the Holy Spirit you will know number six that the Holy Spirit is speaking to you because you will know that the fruit of the Spirit is with you. You'll have that peace, that joy, that long-suffering, that gentleness, that self-control. Again, this doesn't mean that it won't be uncomfortable, that it won't, you know, bring something else because you're not used to submitting to the voice of the Holy Spirit, okay? So don't get that mixed up, but you'll move in grace because you know that God is calling you to do that. Number seven is the Holy Spirit will speak through parables, environments, situations, other people, believers and non-believers, and even experiences. Okay, there's an infinite amount of ways the Holy Spirit can speak to those who are listening. God has trained me up since I was a young child to have a listening ear. Okay, my parents were always arguing. They're not like this anymore because they've met Jesus Christ. They've been filled with the Holy Spirit and they've crucified their flesh. But growing up, they were always arguing. So I was always listening. I was there as a little kid, right? No electronics. I didn't read books. I was there listening. My ear tuned in because I wanted to know who was right, who was wrong. I wanted to be able to explain, have a defense, even though just about 100% of the time, maybe 99.9% .9 of the time, I never even said anything to them because I was just a little kid. I was just listening, but God tuned in my ear to listen. So the Holy Spirit can speak in just about any way. <laughs> we serve a limitless God. Mark 4.34, Jesus said, or the word of God says, but without a parable, Jesus did not speak to them. And when they were alone, Jesus, Jesus explained all things to his disciples. So it says here in Mark 34, Mark 4.34, that Jesus only spoke in parables. Okay, Jesus spoke in parables. The Holy Spirit will speak in situations, environments, like that first story I shared that the Holy Spirit was already moving in his plan when we were gathering this food after Thursday church. And I said, we should give this food out to people. 
the Holy Spirit was already speaking and moving in his ways. Okay, so the Holy Spirit can speak. Number one, I want to give a quick recrack, quick summary. Number one, the voice of the Holy Spirit is gentle, soft, gracious, but firm and stern like a father. Number two, the Holy Spirit usually won't tell you much. It's not a long thought out process with the reasons behind everything, but it's very simple. Why the Holy Spirit wants you to move in faith step by step. Number three, it very often won't make sense and you won't have a reason for it. Again, God wants you to move in faith. Number four, you will have grace and peace. And this doesn't mean it won't be uncomfortable because it often will be uncomfortable if it's something you're not used to doing. Number five, if you're submissive to God and pray over it, it will really stir up in your spirit more and more, and you will just have to do it. You will have to give that word. You will have to do that thing. No matter how big or small, it will stir up in your spirit. Number six, you will know that the fruit of the Holy Spirit is with you. The love, joy, peace, grace, gentleness, kindness, goodness. The fruit of the Holy Spirit is abiding in you as you abide in what the voice of the Holy Spirit is telling you to do. Number seven, the Holy Spirit will speak through parables, environments, situations, other people, believers and non-believers, and even experiences. So God bless you so much. If you're listening on the Immovable Faith podcast, Thank you for leaving a review. If you're here on YouTube, thank you, my friends, for hitting that thumbs up. God bless you. Be blessed. Be encouraged. In Jesus' mighty name.